It was gonna happen eventually, and my goodness. So, you know, like, when Hop Hop buried the music box, you knew eventually that was gonna come to play in some episode, and this is the episode. So, how's everyone doing today, guys? My name is T-Codes, and this is episode 33B of Amphibia After the Rain. I would admit, part of me was kind of expecting this to be part of a 22-minute episode. I was kind of caught off guard at the fact that this was an 11-minute episode. I mean, don't get me wrong, they do hit all the main points of this type of episode. I just felt like it was... It, well, I, I don't know, I guess I just didn't see it as that big of a deal in terms of the length of the episode because, you know, it's like... I mean, we get good stories out of 11-minute episodes, but... I, again, this is a really big deal. And, okay, so... Ugh. So the episode starts with Anne getting a message from Marcy saying that they they got everything ready and they're ready to go to the first temple, so all they need to do is retrieve the music box. And so Hop Hop says he'll have it by tomorrow... Which, in other words, he is going to go out to the tree and dig it back up. And basically, yeah. So, I mean, it was... At first, I wasn't sure if he actually was going to do it. Like, I thought he was going to, like, make up a lie and say the box went missing or something. But I'm glad he actually went to dig it up because he really... Because, again, he cares about Anne. He really wants her to get home. He just... There's just something about the box that scares him, and it makes sense, because, you know, when it's called the Calamity Box, and it says, danger, destroy, like, it said it was destroyed, too, so obviously this thing coming, this, there's some history with this thing. We just don't know what, in terms of Hop Hop's case, I mean, we know this is, like, some teleportation box, as we learned with King Andreas a few episodes back. But, yeah, so Hop Hop in the middle of the night, goes to dig it up, but the thing is, Anne is up because she's so excited to go find the first temple, and she hears Hop Hop going outside, and then she goes and follows him, and then, yeah, all of, everything goes to heck, and it gets worse when Hop Hop digs up the hole, like, uncovers the hole, and the box is gone. Like, that's probably the... Fr that, pro that part freaked me out, too. Because I'm like, wait, what? Like, Hop Hop's freaking out. He's, like, basically saying... Like, he sh he's like, no, it, it was, I left it right here. I swear, I left it right here. And then Anne's, like, you know, right behind him. And she realizes that all these weeks, he's been lying to her about what, actually, what he actually did with the music box. And, of course, Hop Hop has really no way to defend himself other than saying that he was trying to protect he, he 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 like he, he keeps saying that the box he said he he he's okay so he tries to explain to Anne that he read about the box and that he found out that it was very dangerous and that he just didn't know what to do other than burying it for the time but of course Anne in the moment would felt really betrayed because again he lied to her about what he actually did with it and she kind of felt like he was keeping her there on purpose rather than wanting her to get home. And so you would understand that why she gets angry and why she storms off and why she continuously screams to hop pop not to follow her. <laughs> like literally there's like she literally turns around and says, "No, don't. I see you there." It's like, okay, but basically, yeah, Hop Hop feels defeated, feels terrible about what happened, and of course, the fact that the box is now gone, like, that's probably the chair on top of all of this, the box is gone, and so she, and so morning comes, and Sprig and Polly wake up, they go downstairs, they see Hop Hop is a wreck, and they ask what happened, and he tells them the truth, tells them everything, and so... Hop, but Sprig and Polly, even though the, at a, for a second they do kind of feel that betrayal as well, they say, okay, well, that doesn't matter right now. Anne's out there all alone. We got to go find, you got to go find her. And so Hop Hop is like, yeah, you're right. It's like, he's like, I've screwed up. I got to fix this. So he goes after Anne while Sprig and Polly go find the box. And as it turns out that the box, oh, actually they have this little funny 
Sonic the Hedgehog bit where Polly turns into kind of like a Sonic ball <laughs> and Sprite rides her in the down. It was so freaking weird. Um, yeah, so if you're wondering where Anne ran off to, she actually went back to the cave that she originally started off in. And so she even makes a joke like, never thought I'd be back in here. And she even has like an Anne was here inscribed into the side of the cave, which I thought was kind of neat. And that's where she is for now, and she really does feel defeated about everything. She feels very betrayed. And so, while Hop Hop is searching for her, Anne and Sprig, I mean, Anne and Sprig, Polly and Sprig go into town, and they discover that they, they, the music box wasn't the only thing that was stolen. It turns out that anything that was buried underground for safekeeping was also taken. And so, Soggy Joe comes in and says... Um, he, he comes in and says that these were the do, this was the doing of the mat, of the Madpie people, of the Madpie beetles, um, which are basically, uh, yeah, it's what it sounds like. It's a swarm of beetles that take things from underground to put on their, put on their backs to impress mates. And so the kids just not, not listening to the rest of Saki Joe's stories go off and, find this group of beetles and it's like this is it it's a very creepy it's a very disturbing image really it's like imagine just a hole with like i want to say like thousands of beetles just moving around and you got all these goods on their backs it's like it's kind of weird it kind of looks like a, a whirlpool of beetles and so while so the kids go there and they actually get trapped in it and so they have to get rescued by Hop Hop and Anne, who are nearby. And so Anne, like Hop Hop finds Anne in the cave. And of course, they have to, they have their moment. And before Hop Hop can explain why he really did it, they hear Anne, they hear Spring and Polly screaming. So they go after them. They try and help, and they help them. And even Anne, um, like, doesn't even want to work with Hop Hop. She wants to do it by herself. But then Hop Hop convinces her to help him, saying that, just trust me long enough to save Sprig and Polly. And so and they agree, they help, they save them. And of course, afterwards, Anne, they get the music box. And then Anne takes the box and decides to go and wait for, go on her own and wait for Marcy, basically. But that's when Hop Hop finally tells her the truth of why he hit it. And the way they did it was so, it was sudden, it was good, it was shocking, and it was good it was good and so what i mean by that is Anne's walking away hop hop is standing there trying to convince her to stop and so he closes his eyes hangs his head and says sprig and polly's parents and then they cut to Anne's feet and she, and it stops her dead and like she stops dead in her tracks that was pretty that was in my opinion that was per that was perfect because it adds more to the lore with with the family. It adds more, and it also shows how much Anne really cares about them. Because you know we had that moment with Anne and Sprig about mother, about his mother, you know, because like he said, he never knew her, so he under, so she understands the he, she understands the weight of the of that line, and of course she turns around and Hop Up explains why he hit the box. Now, originally, I thought he was going to explain that there was something about the box that caused their parents to go away, but it turns out it wasn't. So, the herons from the um, the Toad Tower episode, remember back in season one when the, the giant, giant frog-eating birds attacked the Toad Tower and, like, gobbled up a few of the toads? So, apparently, that's what happened in Wartwood one time. So Hop Hop says that he one one day he was he was out of the, he was out of Wartwood and the herons attacked, and Sprig and Polly's parents they hid them under the house to be safe. But unfortunately, their parent they didn't make it. So Sprig and Polly were all alone, and thus Hop Hop was their only relative left to help raise them and take care of them. And so basically, he never wanted anything dangerous to be around Sprig and Polly again, which kind of makes sense why early on in the series, he was a little bit more overprotective of Sprig and Polly and very kind of judging of Anne a bit. And so 
yeah, it makes sense. Then, yeah, so he basically he's like, I when I discovered the box was very dangerous, I couldn't risk it. I had to hide it. I had to make sure it was... I had to make sure it was safe from Sprig and Polly, so that way nothing bad could happen. And so... And in the moment... And in the moment forgives Hop Pop and understands why he did it. But you kind of do feel like it's this isn't the end of it, because as... <laughs> As I've heard a lot, um, trust is earned but easily taken. And in this case, it's kind of hard to think that Anne is, is going to immediately trust Hop Hop again. Like, there is a fracture in this relationship now between the two. Whether it's going to go away by the, end of the by the end of the season, who knows? But maybe by the end of the... Maybe, maybe it'll take till the end of the series. Who knows how long this fracture will be. Because... I mean, we've seen a lot of, we've seen that. We've seen people who gain the trust of each other have that trust betrayed, and it's never the same after that. And so, yeah. And so, um, they do leave it off on this note of Hop Hop showing the, the kids what the box is. You know, he shows them the book, shows them what the box is, and of course, Anne's like, Calamity Box. Yeah, that definitely doesn't sound pretty, so... Then they basically, but then, um, you know, they're like, so what are we going to do? And so they're like, well, I mean, after everything we've been through, we can do this. It's like, we, we can, and it's like, we'll face it together. All, you know, all those lines and episode pretty much ends on that note. And I mean, again, like I said, with an episode like this, you know, where the truth comes out and you feel you, I felt like it should have maybe... I get it. If it, I get it, being an eleven-minute episode because the the temple episode immediately comes after this. But again, I feel like maybe this could have been a twenty-two-minute episode because there's a lot to this that really you feel like really could have been there. I mean, I guess the only thing that would have padded this episode out was more in between the opening and and discovering the truth. Which and, and I guess would would make wouldn't wouldn't make it a little bit of a lag in terms of getting to the actual point. So I understand why they cut it to eleven minute. Why they did an eleven minute episode? Because it's like get to the you know like get to the point and let's and then let's deal with the repercussions. And that kind of what is that kind of what this episode does. But again, it's it it, it is a very very big deal. Because like I said before, this is. Trust isn't an easy thing to come by, and so once you gain that trust, it's so easy to break it. And which Hop Hop proves in this moment, you know, he he betrayed Anne's trust by saying that he was giving it to some contacts and that he was going to get he was going to help her to figure out what to do, but in reality he found out that what this what kind of what this box kind of is and hot and hit it i mean granted he could granted he was going to give it back to her that was probably the only positive out of the entire thing was he was going to give it back to her but it's just the fact that yeah he lied to her and buried it so trust is earned but easily broken so who knows how long it'll take before Anne finally gains the trust of Hop Hop again, so. Okay. <laughs> on, on that on that note, um, that's the end of this vlog, so hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you in the next one with the first temple. Alright.